you are, we are all welcome to this um, webinar session um, talking about what's next after COVID-19, the adaptability and adoption of new technology trends. Well, I will, dis I will be discussing more on the adapting connectivity change across industries. Um, my hotline are listed as importance of connectivity, universal connectivity, key technology trends, uh, there are about six key technology trends ongoing at the moment, and there are more to come, but we'll be, I'll be talking more on two of those. And uh, my view of the future network platform, what is expected of the new uh, future network platform and what is expected now? And I'll be summarizing my own and uh, my view. <clears throat> In reality, affordable and efficient connection is a fundamental component of digitalization. Now, we are, we've been talking about digitalization all this while, but in reality, things are moving beyond that. Industry are going to the 4.0, and internet is the bedrock of all this, but I will use the word network more instead of talking about that same internet. Is the, the network, a reliable network is the core, is the fortress while how all these things work perfectly. So, in as much as we said that, it's as good as clean water, electricity, in creating a sustainable future, a sustainable society for us to live in. We can all say, we can say for free that without the internet, without a good network, um, things tend to be, to slow down. We are more or less like dependent on a very reliable network nowadays. People really talk about um, going out to meet people now. People really talk about, I'm going to the video center to go and read video. What you hear people talk about is Netflix. And what do you, do you hear about them? They want to say, okay, oh, how much, how, how much can your network do? How much speed can you get? What is the user experience? So that shows that, and how much will it, uh, what does it cost you to do this? So what are we talking about? A good network must be affordable and it has to be efficient in every ramification. Now, what is the importance of connectivity? connectivity? I spoke about in the last few years, past few years, we've been talking about digitalization. What did I mean? People are more doing computerization, connectivity. That is what, is, what people are doing. But going forward, what you'll be seeing is more industry move, moving into 4.2, which is the next level, which is the universal connective network, which everything was built on the voice network and mobile broadband services, everything. We have over 9 billion connections to the internet, to this network globally now. This technology is recognized and acknowledged for its availability. That is the first thing a, net a good network must talk about. Availability, reliability, integrity, affordability, and it is trusted to handle sensitive and important information. People want to go onto the network right now, and they want a network that is secured. They want a network that is, that is um, I don't want to use the word cheap, they want a network whereby uh, it doesn't tear their pocket, it works within their body. They want a network that everything they do, it's well, um, there's integrity on the network and reliable. Anytime is there. Yes, at times you might have the network there, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not reliable, it's not usable. So those are the things. Now, what are going into this industry 4.2? What are they looking at? They want visibility. They want transparency, and they want the network that can that capacity upgrade at the slightest moment can be given to them. You can even predict their, um, your customers' capacity capacity requirements, and these are the things we can tell you is readily available on our own network, the BDT network, and. What are we talking about? When you leave that, uh, when you leave that, we talk about adaptability. Customers don't want to hear that. Oh, because my MTU size now I need, I have, a, a, I have a new application, and the MTU size needed is maybe 500, 5,000, so to say. And now you are telling me, oh, your network can't support it. No, our own network in BDT is more of is ready to adapt to that. So you are, have a network. We have a network that is ready that's readily visible for the customer to use, is transparent, it is prepared for capacity upgrade at any point in time, and is readily adaptable, really easy 
for autonomous, autonomous response will be achieved. We are still talking about the digital, we are still talking about the universal connectivity. We are saying everything now is connected, everything. Right from the from electricity, we talk about the Internet of Things, right through the industries, you have autonomous um, manufacturing, automated manufacturing. You have people talking in the university, everybody wants to talk about the Internet, they want to go online onto a reliable network to do their research, to do things. And this leads to the issue of human to human. You, you have human to human connection, whereby you have your meeting remotely, like what we have in now, remote um, meetings, remote presentation, and we have a situation whereby the human to machine, where you have the ATM machines and the rest, and whereby payments are being made and things like that. And also machine to machine. Nowadays, you will see most of the vehicles that you have on the road in 20, 20, 2016 downward, they are automated vehicles, which are readily, which are internet ready. Internet ready, they talk to the internet. You can control your mobile, your, uh, your vehicle from wherever you are, just by connect, good, having a good network connectivity. So these are the things that we're talking about. And um, people want to be, they want to have a reliable network. They, they need a network that can control things easily. People want their camera, they want to monitor their home or their offices from wherever they are. What are they going to use? What, are, what's, what, what would be used in monitoring is a reliable network. So, and everything now is connected and they want it to be simple and affordable. Yeah, talking about the key technology trend. Today, ne today's network are transforming into a platform where application process and other technologies, where other technologies develop and develop and um, deployed and enhanced. So I can say, okay, readily, we have about six going on, going things now. We have the internet of skills. We have the cyber physical presence um, trend. We have the distributed, distributed computer, computer and state. We have the individual radio access. We have the security assurance and we have the zero touch networks. These are things, these, these are things that are really ongoing. These are trends that are real and are here, they are here to stay. We are going to see more of these trends in post-COVID. Well, like I always tell people, normal can never be normal again. The normal, the best we can see, we can call normal is what we have right now. Going forward, you realize that people won't even permit you into their premises. People want to do things, they will close business worth billions of dollars offline, uh, uh, sorry, online. And you won't need to meet face to face. It is happening and it is here to stay. So how you prepared are you? Now, talking about the internet of skills, this is practically talking about how the network are developed or the network is developed. And we can see right in the middle, the base station, this is the network. This is where everything is transmitted. All the connection is transmitted. You can see the human, uh, the human touch at the other end, that is the controller person, the controller at the other end, who is already sending signals through the router, through his own network, to the provider's network and getting it to happen on the other end where his machines are. And information are being shared. This is the real thing. This is what is happening. So do we have networks that can, have, that can handle that? That means we need a network that is ultra fast. VDT, yes, we, our network is going to that level whether it will be as fast as that, which is, we have that on our LTE service, which is the LTE service and are your network haptic encoders? Do they have haptic encoders? Yes. What are we talking about? Haptic encoders. These are we know most of the devices we have nowadays. They are information. When you talk, once you touch the screen, it technically stores your information. So are you telling me if I touch this screen and my information is stored, if another person comes in there, will my that has not been stolen? No, because our network are well secured. So things like that are. Are, are minimized. Yes, artificial intelligence, can the network, can it, can, can, can it operate itself, can things work by itself artificially, which, is, which comes to the issue of the AI. The AI thing, the AI, artificial intelligence, 
So our network are robust to hold on to this, to give you this kind of um, service. What is required when you talk about internet of skills? What is required is all about bridging the geographical distance. I am in Lagos. You are in Abuja. Can we get things? Up? My machine is in Abuja. Can I work on my machine right from Lagos? Yes, using our own network, our seamless network. That's BDT. We, we are having meeting. Will I have a high quality of experience? That is what makes users want to stay on the network. It's about experience. That experience is what keeps them coming back or going away. Our network are well built and well are robust that will give you such an experience. The internet of skills is all about low latency. Does our net, does VDT have such a chance? Yes, our network are, are low, low, low latency. They have low latency, whereby you have, you can push enough data. When the latency is low, you'll be able to push more data, more information across. That is one. And security and privacy. Yes, our network are well secured and there is privacy. So the issue of um, hackers coming in is highly minimized. So we're still talking about um, we're still talking about the internet of skills and security and privacy, which is really germane in every everyone that wants to come onto the network. They will always want to look at how oh, how would this happen? How can my information be stored? How will it not be stolen? So our network is well is well protected that. Things like that do not happen. So you can see the feedback. The feedback, the environment feedback, the, the cloud, the in between is the transmission. And you can see information are being sent across. This is what we should be expecting in the, in the coming days, in the coming months, in the coming years, whereby everybody wants to stay somewhere, but they want a reliable network. And can our network handle this? Yes, the VDT network can handle this. The next one is cyber physical system. People, which is the industry 4.0, people don't want, people want a smart industry. What you hear now is um, Amazon does not, they don't even, they now use drone to deliver service, to deliver orders. And every, um, there are some stores, whereby in the UK, whereby the stores, you don't need to even go with your card. You don't need to have anything. All you need to do is pick things from the shelf. There's nobody to stand at the, at the till. All you need to do, pick your stuff on the, on, the, on the shelf and you walk through the till. And everything you recorded, everything is, um, will be built to your account automatically. That is where we're going to. That is where the, the world is going to after this. After, uh, during this period, and as everything will be seen in the coming days. So big data will be required. Automation will be required. Industries want to be smart. That is the production industry. Things need to be, uh, logistics will be flexible. So these are real things that are here to stay. So cyber physical system, it's simply the result from integration of different systems. So that's what I'm saying. It brings different systems to control a physical process and use feedback to adapt to new conditions. That is what is happening. And that is what we should be expecting. And that is what we are telling you the BDT network can do. Because every process will be integrated or has been integrated to physical product and network and computation. So we have all this thing embedded in our, in our, on our network, whereby you, um, you shouldn't be worried about, oh, can your network adapt to this new change with what I'm planning to do with this and that. We always have our people who are always readily available to help in, in any question, with any question that you always have. Also, when you're talking about cyber physical systems, what you're talking about is like, a lot of data will be acquired because with this lot of data, things there will, there will be need for autom automation, and this will always affect the current operating status. So things need to, things will be fast. There will be need for fast information and feedback. And also, what would this mean? We are telling you the only thing that is needed now is for the human being to just supervise, and the, because everything will be automated. 
we'll talk about we'll talk about the type of automation we see nowadays. And we will readily give example. So what we're talking about is that the future network platform should provide a specific connectivity performance to guarantee these cyber physical systems. Uh, you know, still talking about latency, still talking about critical EV, is, um, still talking about where a controller or complex AI or artificial engineer must take decision and action in real time. So real time is what we are talking about. And the BDT network is, re is primed for this kind of situation. Example of CPS, we have the port of the future. Yes, there's a port of the future readily available in Amsterdam, in Holland, whereby um, there's very limited human contact, very limited, so everything is automated. From the point your ship gets to the, to the harbor, to the offloading, to you paying for all those, uh, all, your, all your tax and everything like that, everything is automated. So this is where the future is, and this is what is going on going now. Automotive, I spoke about, I said, uh, uh, automobile, automotive, I mentioned this earlier. Mobile mo um, vehicles are well primed to handle network connection. You see vehicles nowadays, um, self-driving vehicles. You see vehicles that store user data. You see vehicles that tells you, oh, that automatically tell you, oh, I am, uh, I am low in fuel. I'm low in, uh, in gas. I need to refill. I need to refill. Mm -hmm. These are the reality. I even saw, I saw um, a video yesterday whereby a new, a, um, a new prototype self self fill um self refueling car is being built whereby all you need to do is program your phone and you synchronize your phone to your to your car once you pack it once you pack it you send signal to your car to refuel and the system that refuels it will automatically come down there and get your, your car recharge yes that's the right thing right word recharge because these are the things that have been planned for and these are the things that are already in place Smart manufacturing, yes. Manufacturing frame, they would definitely downsize. Yes, um, some few days ago, I heard um, a certain manufacturing company downsize as much as 9,000 workforce. Oh, why? Because they felt, oh, everything should be automated. Why? why? That is where we need this. People need a smart network that can handle their processes. And that is where you have the BDT. That is where BDT comes to play. So you have BDT that will provide you that network that you need to build on your own network. My own view of the future network platform. The future network platform will be captured by its capability to consistently meet any application need. You, what we hear now that nowadays is banks are going SDN. Um, as, as the end, yes, that's what banks are planning to go. Some of them are adopting it. Software defined network. That that is what you're saying, and that is the reality on ground. And that means huge data, the huge amount of data will be needed, and everything in between. Just imagine it. Data will be going from back to back, crunching big data, data and big numbers. That is what we'll be saying on the network. It will mean the requirement of both open data and certain data, as well as all manner of needs related to uplink and downlink transmission. That means it should be adapted, it should be easily tweaked to suit every of the consumer, consumer needs or customer's needs. And it goes as far as uh, anyone and anything that can benefit from a connection should be able to access and use the network. So it shouldn't be restricted. It should be for everyone, but at the same time, those who need it and you should be able to access and use it with a good user experience. In summary, all this being said, with VDT, you are short of a reliable network that offers data security, high availability, low latency, scalable bandwidth, reliability, usability, cost effectiveness, effectiveness, efficiency, which are which are the requirements for any of the key technology trends towards your full network automation. So whatever of the trend, whichever of the trend you want to adopt, the VDT network is readily available for you to, um, to integrate on and to work seamlessly 
with a good user experience. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that, um, Sheyi. So we've had it all. Um, we cannot do without a reliable network. A reliable network is the bedrock of a sustainable future. And then, of course, the internet network and reliable one is very essential, is likened to water now. So we can say it's likened to life. So we really cannot do anything these days without internet services and a reliable one at that. She is stressed on the fact that in this day and age, everything, everything is connected. Human to machine, machine to machine. There's connection everywhere. And for this connection to work very well for you and I, it has to be simple, it should be transparent, it should be scalable, and above all, it should be avoid affordable. If we cannot afford it, then it will not be available for us to use. He also mentioned the fact that internet and connectivity enables transmission across series of um, in infrastructure. It, is the, it bridges the gap. Connectivity bridges the gap and it ensured, we need to ensure secured and quality service. It shows the bouquet of VDT services which costs across enterprise service, SME service, and retail service. And he's saying, for all your connectivity needs, VDT is a one-shop store. Talk to us and we'll make it happen. Thank you very much once again. So we're going to the answer, uh, question and answer session. Our network is ready to available in all 36 states of the Federation. Ogo State, yes. Uh, when Ogo State, let us know, we'll be readily available to conduct a survey for you. But I know we are in um, the major cities of the nation. We have in Ijebode, we have in Abelkuta, we have in Ilaro, we have in Ibapo. So name it, we are readily available. Um, the 5G has nothing to do with COVID-19. It has nothing to do with health. And um, the, the frequency at which radio has been transmitted um, is lower. The, okay, let me put it this way. The rays of the sun, the, the rays the sun beams to the earth, to human beings, is higher. When it's talked about, the, is higher than what radio devices beam to the human, to, to us human. Why is it higher? Is, why is the sun higher? The location where the radios are placed is above, most times is always above, the, uh, is higher than where the human being, um, where you are, and the distance between you and the, radio, the equipment is always further. So most times, uh, so usually, the radioactive um, rays that we are talking about does not even come to the, to, does not come close to what the sun is beaming at us. So, 5G has nothing to do with COVID-19. It has absolutely nothing to do with COVID-19. So what are we planning to do as regards the 5G network? Our, apparently, we run on the 4G, 4.5G network, 4.5G network, and we definitely will upgrade our network to that level when the NCC issues such licenses out. But 5G is all about faster internet download. Is an upgrade of what we have right now. It's faster speed. When, if we want to achieve all these auto, auto, automated system, if we want to really be what the Western world are, we need to move at that trend. We need speed. We need data crunching. If you're still talking, we want to work on the 3G or 4G, it will be, it will be way back behind other nations of the world. I have to say this on this forum, I'll say this to you. 5G has been launched in some countries and 6G is already in the pipeline. It's already been worked in the, what's it called, in the laboratory at the moment. So 5G has nothing to do, once again, 5G has nothing to do with COVID-19. 5G is all about improved services, improved user experience, improved data download, improved connectivity. That is what it's all about. Thank you.
we have uh, we have the retail service. We have the we have which talks about the LTE. We have the enterprise service, and we have the SME service. Do they work like the MLO, MNOs? Yes. How do I mean? The enterprise has to do with um, with equipment being um, installed at your offices or your premises for services to be transmitted for the internet service. The difference here with the enterprise is that you won't be able to move around with your device. Let me put it that way, I mean, your mobile phone. We don't have that on the on the enterprise, but we have that on the LTE service, which is the retail service. It's almost, if not the same license that we operate. That is how that works. So we have that service that works like the MNOs, and which you can go around with, sorry to say. Now, the third one, which is the SME service. The SME service is tailored towards small um, enterprise, small and medium enterprise. And what this does is it, also installed like the, the installation is also like the enterprise service, whereby a fixed radio will be installed at your office premise or your home, where, but you have the same experience you have on the MNO. The difference is you are not moving around with your device. I have to say this. Yes, the nation was on lockdown, but our network was really working. Is all our communication channels were, op were open and are they are still open. So how had customer been informed? Yes, we've sent correspondence. There were emails that were sent out. There were um, the business officers were mandated to call their customer that we are open for business. So what we're saying is that, and also, also in terms of, yeah, okay, what we're saying is that we're always, always available and our medium of communication are always are still available and not we don't even have another medium but the main medium the traditional which is the email the phone call uh yes the email and text messages and through our social media platform all of these are were still are still readily available i hope that answers the question okay so ladies and gentlemen uh this is to thank you very much for um, your attendance in these past two days. Uh, this, is, um, this brings us to the end of the series. No doubt COVID-19 has brought with it great challenges, but then we have also seen great opportunities. In every, we did mention yesterday that in every challenges, you should be able to assess the opportunities in there. There's no challenge that comes without an opportunity. Now, as parting takeaways, I want us, I want to remind us, do a, re, a little recap and just remind us of some of the learnings that um, we, we've had in the last two days. Uh, one, there's the need for us to be cyber security conscious, both in the office and of course at home. Then we also need to ensure that we render unparalleled customer service. You might not really have the opportunity to start carrying paperwork all around to defend any shabby service that you might have done. So the best thing for you and I is to ensure that you deliver quality service and quality support. That way the customer is happy and of course the organization too is happy. Then we also touch on the fact that change is real. That there's, there's change in, we are experiencing changes right now and you need to change with this change and upgrade your skills. The market touched a lot on this yesterday. Working from home is, has become a reality. It has come to stay. And parts of the offices have now moved to the homes. So you need to ensure that you are indeed working from home and that your, your, your family supports you in respecting your space and also in supporting you in doing your work. Because the way it is now, as far as the nation, in fact, the world is concerned, it is possible that this era of working from home will continue even post COVID-19. So the way it is, we also need to see the advantages in that. We are not stressed on the road. We are not even using so much money for fuel these days, but you need to ensure this works for you. 
And then like it was mentioned yesterday, appraisal time will actually show who has indeed been working for moon and who has been flexing for moon. Then we also need to embrace technology in every aspect of our life. We need to embrace technology where and how you work, how you live, and of course, how you play. Then it was mentioned that data and connectivity is king. We just had it in the last presentation. Data is now likened to water, is likened to life. You need to have it. You need to get data service that will not fail you. Because why? You cannot afford to be cut off from reality. I was reading recently that Cambridge University in the UK announced that it has moved all its lectures online until summer 2021. 2021, so I mean, if schools is doing that, that is showing that connectivity is key. That is showing that connectivity is the main thing right now than never before. So you definitely have to stay connected. For us at BDT Communications Limited, we look forward to working with you so that together we can make this year one of the greatest years in history, irrespective of the present challenges. Yes, there's bound to be anxiety, I anxiety, but what we are saying is we need to still look at light after every tunnel. And if we do that, and if we, and if we do our part, we all, be, we all remain standing post COVID-19 and the pandemic. I uh, kindly know that this uh, program is recorded, so you are welcome to access it at a later date. Uh, for free, I want to leave you with the professional advice of my chairman, Mr. Rutsin Mwikomi. He's a seasoned um, financial expert. And what he said is that you must preserve cash especially in this challenging period. Somebody will be wondering, how can I preserve cash when, I do, when I'm not even doing much? There are actually some industries, some sectors that are not operating, that has not been operating since the lockdown. But despite that, is, he emphasized the fact, the fact that you need to preserve cash. He said that the worst thing that can happen to any organization, or even in the individual in this dispensation, is to run out of cash. If an organization or individual runs out of cash, then downward search will go. So in everything that we do in this period, please let's ensure we try as much as possible as an individual and organization to preserve cash. I would say there are three different, three very important things that we also want to leave with you as we close this session. The first one is your health. Health, they said, is wealth. Please stay indoors if it's not essential for you to go out. But if you must go out, please take, take very good care and take care and ensure that you observe all the laid down precautions. It is for you, it is for I, and it is for the society at large. And of course, stay connected. Do not run out of data. You really cannot afford to get caught off. And like Sheyi mentioned, VDC Communications is there for any form of connectivity that you might need in your office, in your SME business, and also in your home. The Vice President this week actually had the NEC meeting online, remotely. So I mean, even, even courts, we hear these days that courts even hold sessions online. So you can see that Data is very, very important. We cannot do without data in this dispensation. Data has become a very beautiful bride that you and I cannot afford to joke with. Do get data, get connected. And thirdly, conserve your cash. Conserve your cash. On my way to work today, I heard um, in the news that Lagos State Government has slashed its budget 2020 by 21%. So you can imagine if the government is doing that, you and I can actually not afford to go to sleep with the initial budget that we did for year 2020. Most of, most of organizations do have their budget 2020 since Q4 2019. 
And of course, we know that Q4 2019, we actually did not know that the word lockdown, pandemic will come on. So definitely the budget that you have made as an organization, as an individual, since Q4 2019, did not survive. You need to look at it. For Lagos State Government to be slashing is, you and I also need to look at the same thing. For organization, this might not be a good time for you to carry out all your 2020 KPIs. And for individuals, this will not be a good time for you to be extravagant. You might need to actually reduce drastically extravagant spendings um, in this era. So please, let's be watch, watchful and conserve our cash. And once again, we appreciate everyone that has been here since morning, that, were, that, that joined us yesterday, both on Zoom and also on Facebook. We thank you for your time. We thank you for your contributions. I will definitely get back to you when we are having the next series of the VDT um, webinar. So do continue to keep safe. And please remember VDT keys. Take care. God bless. Bye.